Why do you think I would always insist that the audience comes closer to me? That's well said symbolically, but really in that situation, why is it important that the physical distance is reduced? Can you and remain engaged? The closer to you and engaged, we become a less likely to be distracted by other things. You're sitting in the back and the cafe staff are walking around and shuffling around and people are picking up things and moving cameras and so forth, I get distracted. And that's going to break the, the, the flow of our office. And did it take you too much effort to figure this out? Or is it kind of obvious? The grades in school. Which means we all know. Which means it's not something very new or very yeah, original or we all know. And still, if you remember, we used to find it difficult to convince people to come to the front. Do you remember? Yeah. It would require some persuasion and, and some people would even walk away. And we have to say move up, move up, yeah. please, please. Yeah. Yes. And so what does that tell us? People are somewhat unclear of faces. Or are they actually clear? They very well know why they are sitting at the back. Because well, they're coming to the situation with fear of uh, surrendering to be having a connection as soon as something confronts the belief system or models of how the world is, so it's easy at the back, you can kind of slip your way out very, very easily. Very easily. Yeah. But at the front, you're, you're stuck there. You have to get up in front of everyone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see how we support our own internal conspiracies? There is something within us which wants us to fail, which is our own enemy, and we support it. I think it was on your Facebook page did I that I read that uh, story about the two wolves. Shiraki yeah? saying, what we feed is... Yes, which, which wolf wins? The one that we feed. You see how we keep feeding the wrong wolf most of the times. In fact, there is one thing I am gaining clarity on, that there is nothing called as ignorance. We all fully well know. We all fully well know why we are hiding at the back, why we refuse to come to the front, why we put it very close the matter by saying that we know it since class two. We know it since class two that the ones who are the backbenchers. They are backbenchers precisely because they want to avoid the teacher. Now in school you have a certain compulsion. Here you are ostensibly coming by your free will. Do you see what kind of misnomer this thing called free will is? On one hand you are coming there, on the other hand you are committed not to come.
And again, just to relate it to the thing we were talking of, all so that you aren't dislodged from your comfortable cushions. All so that And when you fear that, you already have an image of the resultant happening in mind. And you already have a fear associated with that happening. If I come close, this may happen. If that happens, I will suffer a lot. And what is suffering? Something very bad. So all that inner story is already on. And you don't even know whether that story has any factualness to it. And you know what is common in all these stories? One thing. You know what is common? I am not strong enough to bear the pain. I am not strong enough. Have you ever tested how strong you really are? Yes, your assumption that some loss may come to you may indeed be factual. Hmm? Your assumption may come true. But next to this assumption sits another assumption. That assumption is, if I be a loss, then I will crumble. Have you ever tested that assumption? Yes, loss you will bear. But will that necessarily be the end of you? I keep saying, test that. You will find it a false assumption. The loss will hurt. But you will emerge a survivor. You will live through it. It will pinch, rind, rankle, but not finish you. Mind you, not finish you. Nothing can finish you off. And why must this simple statement be so hard to accept? I don't know. If you are convinced that you won't be finished off, then why will you avoid sorrow so much?